Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Ariel Epstein. Joining us today, Ryan Williams. We are talking some NFL. Never too early. I cannot wait to talk some NFL stacks today, Ryan. Oh, yeah. This is this is that time of the season. We're about a month away from training camp opening up. I guess a little, little over a month for some teams. But, I mean, football is right around the corner. And what better way to uh, get us there than to talk about some best ball stacks that people can be targeting to use on their best ball teams? Your first of three of your top best ball stacks has to do with the Los Angeles Rams. Why are you targeting this team? And who are you going to put in your best ball stack? Oh, I'm so happy you brought this up first, Ariel. Yeah, the Rams. Okay, so they just – Shipped away Jared Goff, their number one pick. They bring in Matthew Stafford, heads the farm for him. I mean, these guys don't have a first round draft pick, I don't think, until 2024, it seems like. Five years down the road, almost. But they're saying that they think that Matthew Stafford could be the Drew Brees for them. They got a seven, eight-year window. So let's factor that into best ball and talk about this year. Obviously, they've invested a lot in Matthew Stafford. And this guy is still going outside of being a QB1 this year. I don't know why, because... Sean McVay has been doing stuff with Jared Goff, who people, you know, want to throw under the bus. Now we get a Matthew Stafford who's consistently throwing for 4,000 yards when he's healthy. He's got two weapons on the outside and Marvin Jones and, or my gosh, he used to have Marvin Jones and Gilly He's got two weapons on the outside and Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, who I think are better um arguably than those two guys i think this offense is going to be explosive everybody's loving on the rams if you go to the fan fan duel sportsbook and look at their odds um even even his odds matthew stafford's odds for mvp is up there but people don't want to target this team in best ball and i get it the the wide receivers they're going around the range of of 30 in adp or 40 if you're looking at Robert Wood specifically, Cooper Cup even going closer to 50 in some leagues. These guys are going to pay that off. I think if you attack this and draft Matthew Stafford with one, if not both of his pass catchers, I think you're really within a treat. I think you could get possibly a QB1 payoff for Matthew Stafford and then two top 24 wide receivers um, at the position as well, too. I love this buy low value on Matt Stafford. You're talking about a quarterback that's been top 10 in the league in passing yards, in addition to passing touchdowns, used to having to throw the ball as well, as you mentioned in Detroit. I love Stafford with his wide receivers in L.A. As you can see behind me, I have this Baltimore Ravens helmet. That means I must be aligned with them in some way. I am loving that you are going back to this Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, quarterback to tight end set as part of your best ball lineup. Why is this a great best ball stack for year three of this duo? Yeah, I got to love that Ravens helmet there in the background. And I, I don't think we've done uh, a hit without talking about the Ravens there, Ariel. And this, this is crazy. It's it, I'm going to need to invest in this team in some way, shape, or form. But And I have in best balls getting to Lamar Jackson and getting to Mark Andrews this year, I think is going to pay off dividends. Look, Lamar Jackson, everybody wants to talk about 2020, how much he struggled to downfield pass. Okay, who was he passing the ball to? Mark Andrews had his worst year, arguably, you know, of his past three in his career. Um, the drops were there. He wasn't, you know, catching as many red zone targets as there was before. But even when you look at Mark Andrews' numbers with the seven touchdowns and really having a down year, obviously better for standard there with the touchdowns. But looking at even, even in PPR formats, when he finished as the tight end six, I believe he was only six points behind Robert Tanyan, who finished as the as the wide risk or as the tight end three. So when you're looking at that discrepancy there of only six points and Mark Andrews catches, you know, what we're used to seeing close to double digit touchdowns, he can definitely pay off there. Look, I get it. It's it's down. But you got to love what the offense is doing here, what Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator and John Harbaugh are saying they want to invest in the past. And that's going to be wheels up for Lamar. We know he has the rushing upside, but now you're adding in guys like Rashad Bateman. They brought in Sammy Watkins. They're letting the running backs go out there and, and catch routes that Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins are going to be getting targets this year. I think it's wheels up for this Ravens offense, and I love targeting them at where they're going. I think Lamar Jackson clearly can finish as a top two quarterback um, in this league, and and Mark Andrews going behind a guy like Kyle Pitts, the rookie, um, currently right now is the tight end five. I think that's that's too low for him. I think you can definitely pay off getting this stack and you can get this in the mid rounds. You don't have to invest an early pick like you were before in Lamar Jackson. Both Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews entered the league in 2018. However, Lamar didn't start the season until 2019. Three years now that these two have been starting together for the full season. Last one here. We're going with the Pittsburgh 
Pittsburgh Steelers. You're going with the AFC North trend. You like Ben Roethlisberger paired up with Johnson and Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju Smith-Schuster coming back to the Steelers after a lot of doubt with his future in Pittsburgh. Why is this a stack to target? Yeah, I, I love getting to the Steelers stack as well. Look, I mean, it's crazy when you're looking at last year, and I and I think people are taking the the bye week what the Steelers did after the bye week you know uh, uh, we got to take that with a grain of salt I mean they they were not themselves they were undefeated going into that bye they were passing lights out Ben Roethlisberger was putting up numbers with Deontay Johnson with Chase Claypool with Juju Smith-Schuster and then they fell off they were scoring over 24 points per game in every game heading into the bye and then after that they fell off I think that had a lot to do with their offensive coordinator, Randy Finchner, who's not there anymore. They promoted the quarterbacks coach, Matt Canada, who's who's known to be a creative guy. This is a guy who's run a lot of college offenses, um, was at LSU in 2018. He, he's very creative. And I think that get buying into this Steelers offense is going to really pay out dividends. Like Deontay Johnson, this guy has wide receiver, like, top 12 potential, potentially even wide receiver one potential. That's crazy to say, I know. But it, look at what he saw last year, 144 targets. He was catching everything until late. And then he had the case of the drop sees. If he can get that together, I think that's going to be nice. He's definitely going to pay off in, in the wide receiver 50 range on where he's currently going. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger is going outside of the top 24 quarterbacks, which is absolutely ridiculous. When you think about in healthy seasons, he's in the top, five of pass attempts every year. I mean, and we talk about this offensive line for the Steelers being banged up and okay, so they're going to have to throw more sign me up for that. I love getting a piece of this offense and even Juju Smith Schuster, who's going, you know, later than Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool, I think makes for a good addition to the stack as you're looking at him kind of people were down on him last year, but he still saw nine touchdowns. He had a good red zone uh, share as well on this team. So if we can, you know, get into the Steelers having to, you know, pass a lot, even with Najee Harris coming into the mix, he's a pass catching back. I think that the Steelers uh, attack, passing attack is going to definitely pay off. And I definitely want pieces of it going into the year. 2021. Ryan, I love that you brought up the pass attempts for Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger's pass attempts props on the FanDuel Sportsbook were my favorite to attack. We pretty much hit every over. That number couldn't get high enough. That's it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. For Ryan Williams, I'm Ariel Epstein. Good luck to those best ball lineups. <laughs> 